so for um, for the second part of today's stream, I thought I would take a look at the uh, CLI scaffolding tool for Vulkan.js uh, made by uh, Mechanical Turk and uh, Alban as well. So um, Alban Kramer, yeah. So uh, yeah, huge props to these two. Like they've done really awesome work. Uh, that's something I've wanted to have for a long time, a, a scaffolding tool. But to be honest, I looked into it and I was just like, okay, uh, that's too much for me right now. Um, I have other things to work on. And uh, this thing like uh, Yeoman, Yeoman, I don't even know how you say that. So that seemed pretty complex. So I kind of, you know, dropped the whole idea. But then uh, they both came along and they started doing awesome work. So we now have something that works really well. So, um, and I actually have uh, to create a new Vulkan project for, uh, for a friend who wants to build uh, something like an Airbnb clone using Vulkan. So I thought it would be a good idea to, to check out the CLI tool. Um, so yeah, here's how it works. Vulkan create app name. So let, let's try it. Um, so it's gonna be called uh, Zance, that's my friend's company name. And the project is actually a Zens room. So, okay, package manager, let's use yarn. So it's creating a new directory and then cloning the Vulkan repo into that new directory. Oh, I'll address a question I have right here um, in the Slack chat room. What's the core of Meteor and DDP being used for right now in Vulkan? Actually, uh, only user accounts. So everything else uh, happens through Apollo. And, um, and hopefully uh, one day the user accounts will also migrate to Apollo, but for now it's uh, a lot easier to just use the uh, out of the box accounts, which use DDP, which is Meteor's own data transfer protocol thing. In fact, DDP means something like data, something protocol data. What's the second D stand for? Huh? I don't know. Distribution, I think. Yeah. Distri okay, distributed data protocol. Um, so that's the, the mockups for my friend's uh, site. It looks super nice. Um, but anyway, for now, we, we won't really need those, you know, unless we need to refer to them to get the requirements for the app. And uh, since this is the first time I'm launching the, the new uh, directory, the new repo, it takes a little bit of time to start up. But okay, it works. It shows me the default uh, movies example. Um, I probably don't want that, right? I want to create my own package. So let's see how that works. Vulkan JS G package and then package name. Let's open a new tab window. Now, do we want to create one big package for the entire app or multiple sub packages? What I would probably suggest is to start off with one package. So uh, in this case, we'll call it Zen's room, just like the app. Done. Um, and it's here. Nice. So we have our client models server directories. We already have a, you know, a few files set up, index routes. So yeah, I would start with one uh, global a custom package for your app. And then if you need like specific features, for example, uh, in an Airbnb clone, like we we're gonna build, you might need uh, uh, properties or, or listings collection for the apartments. So maybe that could be its own package. Uh, this way it keeps things a bit more self-contained and then separated. 
but it's fine to start with just this. You could also just not use a package at all and put everything in your main app directory, that would work, but I don't really recommend it. I like keeping the uh, package-based architecture used by Vulkan. Um, so let's, um, let's go in here and comment out this and add our new package. Now, um, it depends on Vulkan core. It doesn't have any components for now. So it's not going to do anything. It's probably just going to throw an, an error. Generate model. That's something we want to do. So generate model, package name, model name. And now I've uh, listed out the models we need here. Now users, uh, there's already a user model in Vulkan, so we don't need to create it, although we will extend it. And then I think the main things we need um, are properties, yeah, reviews and bookings. So let's, uh, so yeah, this is a case where we might want to use different packages or not. Well, I guess I'll, I'll put everything in the same package for now. Um, so that should work. Package name Zenstrom, okay. Model name properties, okay. Do we want to add a custom property to the collection? Yes. So what's it going to be called? Um, well, name would be a good start. Is it hidden? No. Uh, label, okay, name. Type uh, string. Is it optional? Um, no, it's not optional. Who can view it? So guest, yes. And if guests can view it, anybody can, so. Um, Actually, maybe I didn't select it because I have to. Um, yeah, that's how it works. Who can insert a new property? Can any member insert a new property? For now, um, I'll assume that yes. And who can edit? Also a member. Add another custom property? Yes. Um, so this might be a nested object. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, so I'll skip that for now. Um, then we have price per month, price per night, um, security deposit, fees, so on. Let, let's keep this simple for now. We'll, uh, yeah, let's say number of beds. So, um, it's not hidden. Uh, Gonna be a number. Uh, it's is it optional? Probably not. Should be required. So, not optional. Who can view it? Guests and member. Member. Um, and let's add one more, maybe. So, number of guests. Um, Wait, did I call it a guest number or number guest? No, guest, okay. No, um, probably label number of guests, number not optional, viewable by guests and insertable by members, by, whoops, members. Uh, I, I'll, I'll stop here for now, you get the idea. So it says there's a conflict, but that's just uh, because it's changing the file. So we can say yes to override it. And it created all these new files for us. So model properties. So I named my model properties, which in retrospect is a maybe a bad idea because property already has a meaning in, in you know coding and JavaScript. So uh, maybe listings would be better. But anyway, we can change that later. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, that's, that's gonna bug me. Like, as they say, like, naming is the hardest thing in, in coding. Um, I think the other one is cache invalidation, or, I don't know, I forgot. Um, so we have uh, some default files with some content, and it's just giving us, like, a, a boilerplate to start from, so that's pretty cool. Um, we do want a user ID for the properties. And we have this, so that's pretty cool. 
Let's see what else the CLI can do. Can generate a component. Okay, that, that's interesting. So let's try this. Zen's room, model name, properties, component name, uh, maybe properties lists. Uh, properties list. Hmm, does it need to be a class component? I don't think so. Pure function. Uh, do we want to reg register it? Yes, we do. Let's see what we got. Properties list. Cool. Now there's a bit of some yeah some weirdness going on with the uh, indentation, <laughs> but it's easy enough to fix. We don't really need the old uh, extra stuff. Um, Okay, um, you can grid up this as well. Cool, um, we can probably create a route now. Let's see if, um, yeah, right on time, that's the next step. So as you can see, like this, this uh, command line is really, really awesome because it takes you through all the, uh, the most common things you'd wanna do. Uh, let's see home for now, root path, um, just this component name. So the one we just created, properties list. Layout name, we can keep the default. There's a conflict, again, that's normal. We'll override it and then see what we get here. So again, indentation, a bit weird, but that's, that's not a super, uh, Big deal. Okay, clean this up. And then we have our route, home, path, component. Um, yeah, actually, that would be better. So what's the difference? Simply that uh, if you do component name, uh, the component won't be um, uh, resolved until you actually uh, launch the app. So that means you can uh, overwrite the component, maybe with a theme or something else. If if we had this, um, as soon as we add the route, so as soon as this file is executed, this will be resolved. And then if you modify this later, it wouldn't really work. So better like this. Um, and then remove package, remove model, list packages, list routes. We don't need that for now. So now let's make uh, our new site work. Component properties list not registered. Ah, okay. Yeah, because although we have uh, created a new component, we haven't linked it from, from anywhere. So here we probably want to do um, this. So go back. Yeah, I guess the structure could be improved maybe a little bit because like um, uh, index routes is not really a model. But anyway, um, so go back one directory, components, properties, uh, and then properties list, dot JSX. Okay, and reload. Huh. So, um, mm, mm, mm. you know, one thing we can, uh, okay, we actually have an error here, but it's the same. You know what, Let, let's double check this. Register component properties list. Okay, um, just gonna make sure that this is actually being uh, imported. Yeah, okay, um, so what's, what's going on here? 
Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Not my. So wait, I, that shouldn't make any difference, but it might. You know, maybe we need to import the component first before we reference it, but that shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's always the fun part, figuring out why things don't work the way they should. I'm gonna see if the React Dev tools are uh, no, they're. Hmm. It's probably something really stupid. Um. So how would we resolve this kind of problem? Well, you know, we can just um, s see what what kind of props the app component is getting, and go from there. You know. Okay, so it is getting a, a children prop and it's the right one so okay that um oh okay okay yeah that makes sense um yeah, there is no uh, layout named components that layout. Uh, it will either be layout or something else. Or, you know, by we, we just want to use the default layout, so we don't need anything at all. Um, since it's my first time using the CLI, I, I didn't know it would, uh, hadn't noticed it did that. So that's something we need to fix. Because, yeah, otherwise, the, this layout component here, you know, would just uh, not find anything under that name. So, okay. Perfect. Uh, now our uh, component is showing up. And that, that's a great start. So um, where do you go from there? Well, you can keep using the, the CLI or you can start coding, you know, from scratch. Or you can uh, also take a look at the, let's say, the example movies package and uh, go from there. There, these are all good options, but I really like the CLI, especially for the, the scaffolding aspect. So actually, I'm going to scaffold a couple more uh, models and components. So um, I'm going to go back to my requirements here. I have reviews and bookings. OK, so. So reviews, uh, let's add a custom property. Um, let's say comment, it's not hidden, label is comment, it's a string, is it optional? No. Is it who's, who can view it? Guests, members, and members. Um, let's just stop here for now, okay. Uh, overwrite and then the other one was bookings yes mm, check-in date Um, so we don't have a um, date in here, but we'll uh, say custom for now, guess member, member, and probably we want uh, the checkout date.
and overwrite. And now we have our uh, three directories all with, you know, everything, everything we need to get started. So that's pretty cool. Um, there was one thing I wanted to correct here, right? The name is not viewable by anybody. So. Oh, and those should all be plural. Um, yeah. Anyway, I can fix that later. But there you go. Uh, that's the uh, Vulkan CLI. And uh, so it's still a work in progress. There's a few things we need to fix. But overall, it's a super useful tool. So uh, go check it out. It's uh, Vulkan.js slash Vulkan dash CLI. Uh, huge props again to uh, Mechanical Turk and uh, Albin for their awesome work. And I think it's going to make a huge difference in the, the learning curve for Vulkan because it's going to make it much easier to get started. So I'm going to stop the stream for now for today. But as soon as I fi find something else to work on, maybe uh, this project again or some other improvement, uh, I'll let you all know. And I'll probably make a habit of streaming around this time uh, every time. So um, 9 a.m. Uh, Japan time and then um, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and uh, 8 p.m. New York Eastern Coast time and then, you know, the rest of the world, I'll leave you figure it out. So um, thanks for tuning in and uh, don't hesitate to come say hello in the Slack chat room at slack.vulcanjs.org if you're not there already. And see you soon for uh, another stream.